Hello and welcome to another Caseware webinar. Today we'll be covering advanced mapping within Caseware. My name's James and I'll be hosting the webinar today alongside the terrific Tony, one of our senior uh, techni uh, senior education and media consultants, sorry, uh, who will be presenting today. Uh, as always, we'll be running a live Q&A session at the end of today's webinar. So if you have any questions, just pop them on the uh, Q&A chat just shown on screen there. Um, and if you have any technical issues in regards to the stream itself, then please just use the chat and uh, I'll respond as soon as possible on there. A recording of today's session will be made available uh, on both our Knowledge Base and YouTube channel. Uh, so we would encourage you to, to go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have a chance there. Uh, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and hand over to Tony to run through the agenda for today. Thanks there, James. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. And thanks there, James, for the, the introduction. What we're going to do is get the, the agenda up on the screen for today and what we're going to be covering. That should be loading your slide now, um, slowly loading up each section. Now, the, the main focus really on here is following up from the introduction mapping webinar we did a few weeks back. Um, so if you haven't watched that webinar yet, then it is available on the knowledge base. So feel free to go on there and have a, a peruse later. Uh, it may fill in a few of the gaps that you're going to get from today's session. Okay. Now, the main focus of this session is going to be talking about flips. So whether that's flips with mapping or whether that's flips with grouping. The, the flips with mapping, well, that's going to affect our financial statements and the flips with our groups, well, that's going to go through and affect our lead schedules. And then at the end of that, we'll have a Q&A uh, where you can go through and ask any questions you like about the areas we're covering and, or any other areas that you may feel needed. Now, additionally, uh, seeing how much time we've got left of the session, what I'll be doing is showing you how you can potentially use some of your own custom groupings if you wanted to, uh, which are really advantageous if we're using uh, or preparing group accounts into company balances where we want uh, a set amount of normal accounts to populate a lead schedule, uh, which doesn't really fall within the remit of what case we're built to. So hopefully you get time for that. If not, I'll send some guides at the end of the webinar so you can see it. Right. So let's start off with some slides. So where we were in the previous session was I said, okay, you take your chart of accounts from wherever product you're using and you can bring it to Caseware. And once you bring it to Caseware, well, you assign it map codes, whether it's a again, 11, nine character or seven character, and that goes through and drives the accounts and also the lead schedules. Now, that isn't 100% accurate. There is a different step that goes through and populates the lead sheets, okay? So the map numbers will go through in most cases, uh, populate all the areas within the financial statements. And sometimes some lead schedules, depending on how they've been set up. But predominantly, what happens is when we assign the map codes, you also assign this grouping. Uh, and then the grouping is what's going to go through and populate our lead schedules. So, what we really want to do today is show that link between the map codes, show that link between the groupings, but also explain at the same time what the flips are uh, and what kind of challenges that you may come up against whilst using caseware uh, and using all the different charts of accounts that we use. Because again, you have to remember. Well, the case where it is a template, uh, and sometimes we do need to modify that template to get what we need out of the system. Okay, so where are we going to start off with? Let's look at mapping versus groupings. Now, first section here is that the, the groupings and the mappings aren't the same. However, if you're a Mercia user, uh, if you've prepared all this under Mercia or you're just familiar with the packs, then you'll know that E is the, well, the, is the section financial statement area within that pack which will show you all fixed assets. Um, if you want a tangible fixed asset schedule, it's E1-1D. So what happens when we set the mapping up, we assign E groupings to A fixed asset mappings. Uh, so that way, when we assign the mapping, it also assigns the grouping uh, and we can populate these sheets and the accounts. Now, what we also need to worry about there is flip, uh, flips. Now, when we look at mapping, there's going to be flips between current assets and current uh, or current liabilities or creditors due within the year. When we look at, say, bank accounts, well, one year it could be overdrawn, one year there could be a balance in there. So we want Caseware to do some of the work for us, don't we? We want Caseware to move the balances from a current asset to a current liability and vice versa. Now, that is the same behavior that we can also drive within our groupings. Uh, so we can drive between our groupings to go through and populate, say, between J, which will be our purchases and our creditors, um, and H, which will be our, uh, our debtors. So there'll be flips between H and J within the, within the groupings, which we'll see a bit later. Okay. Now, if you're unsure about what flips are, uh, then just read this short paragraph on the screen, and that will tell us exactly what we need to know. Okay. 
I'm a slow breather, so that's good long enough for you. Um, right, so mapping flip codes, where are you going to find out where, where the flip properties are? This, as you can see on the screen now, is the map number property screen. Okay, um, and what it does, it will tell you what the map number is, so D1102, uh, 0001. And then underneath it will start talking to you about flip properties. So this is your VAT control, uh, control account, potentially. D there will tell me that it's a current liability. So it's a VAT liability. So it expects a liability, a credit balance. And there we go, okay, that's confirmed by the sign. And on the right -hand side here, we're saying, well, if the balance we assign to D11 isn't a credit, well, send that balance over to D0204, which is our current assets, our current, um, and when you see that, that'll be back repayable, okay? Now, what we can do on these, um, we can access these properties from the mapping screen or other areas within the platform, and you can modify these if you need to. Now, what I'm gonna do quickly is I'm gonna jump into the file quickly uh, so you can see that going through. Um, and two seconds, there we go. All right, that's the wrong screen, so apologies there. Live webinars. All right, so what we're gonna do here then is to, I would go to assign mappings here. Okay, so if you're a new user or say a new firm that's picking up caseware, maybe you're an industry client that you wanna modify mapping. Well, you can go into the assign mapping screen and you can go down to say, that's our tax due, B11. I'm gonna to go, to, go to VAT there. And there's our VAT control account. Now, right click, and go to properties. Now, potentially, depending on what company you work for, whether it's a practice client or an industry client, that there may be some security in place that stops you getting into these properties. So if you can't see uh, map number properties at your office, uh, you'll need to go and see, speak to your case with super user uh, and inquire about obtaining some access, okay, if you need them. Now, what you can see here is these uh, is the property screen I just showed you on the PowerPoint. Um, display of credit, the, the alternative map code here, which in this case will be that uh, back repayable account code, map code, sorry. Now, these can be set and modified, okay? Uh, in some cases, you're going to want to. Now, the way we set up our VAT control account is if it's a large entity which possibly has two or three different um, back, uh, back schemes. So potentially it's got French TVA, maybe it's got a, a UK VAT scheme and maybe a few others where it's reclaiming or working throughout Europe. Now, on this example, we don't have that. Okay, so on this example, what we've got is just a bit more of a standard SAGE surcharge of accounts where we've got about liability, sales tax and purchase tax. Now, the way this map number is set up is that it wants to treat these as separate VAT schemes. So as you can imagine, if you set them up as a separate VAT scheme, it doesn't want to net them all to one balance. So the way Caseware is set up here, if it goes to properties, is to display your credit. So what it will do is these two credit balances, well, they'll keep those in one place, but this uh, 100,000 purchase tax here, well, that's gonna move that to a current asset, okay? So in some cases, what we can do is we can either modify the settings at the start, um, or later on, we can modify them. If we're gonna modify them later on, what we don't wanna do is modify them from this screen, because if I change the setting now here, well, that won't automatically change the settings that have already been assigned to these account codes. Because I've already assigned these account codes to this map number, if I go to the properties now and I change it, well, let's just change it to something very easy to see. So let's just change it to short-term loans to others, just so you can see the map number's uh, changed there. And then press OK. And then OK and save or apply and say, it doesn't matter which way I do. If I go back to the trial balance now, and let's have a look at my, there we go. So there's my bad liability, purchase tax. Obviously these are the same at the moment, but if I go through now, activate my map flip, and this is actually, okay, this is a tip I'd, I'd recommend all of you do. Go to reorder columns and add a bit more information into your TV. Um, you can see mine's a bit streamlined anyway. So if you're brand new to Caseware, go to view, go to reorder columns, and set your trial balance up. It's going to be useful for you, okay? Um, I'm going to go through and move my map number flip over. and just drop that over here. And then I'm also going to go through and I'm going to get my LS flips. So LS is my lead schedules. So really what I want to do is have all of those over there. So map numbers and lead sheets. I'm using Mercy, but I you can use HAT, you could use Kestrian, PCAS, whatever you prefer. Um, or if you're asked to use, if I press OK there, then I can go through this side now. At this point here, well, we should be expecting really to see this one now be changed to 8.1, shouldn't we? But it hasn't updated. So if I go back into account and assign mappings, 
and then go back down to tax and then VAT expand and then right click properties. You can see I've changed it to CCO2 040081. However, because I've already assigned those, it's not going to update it. Okay, so effectively, if you change the map numbers after you've already assigned those accounts, you need to unmap them, save it. Okay, and then what I do is it's a good habit it's just to clear this information down and then go to assign mappings and then we assign it. So let's assign those three account codes over to VAT. There we go. And now when I assign it, I press OK. You can see now it comes through with the correct or the modified flip properties there. Okay, so make sure if you are changing any of those properties on the screen, if you're doing retrospective changes, that you make sure you unsign the accounts and then reassign them to make sure those, those settings apply. Otherwise, what could happen is that you could do half a job and it's got the, the, the new map number that you want to sign, but the old flip properties and so on, which would obviously not be very useful. Okay. Um, you can also edit these from the screen. So really, we need that to be this one, don't we? So sorry, not seven, uh, eight one, we need it to be seven one. So I could just manually change it because I know what it is. Or you could use the drop down here and change it to battery payable from this side. Okay. Now, let's go back into the slides quickly. So here we go. Just an example, some flips, some, and just to re, really reinforce this. The idea here then is that when the 2021 accounts, we had a bank account, and in that bank account, there was a 15,000 pounds balance. Uh, and we assigned that to the map code C04010001. Now, in 2022, not so good, uh, we've got an overdrawn balance of 5,000. Now, at the moment, we're still assigning that 5,000 to a current asset, which is C04. So what the flips are going to do for you is just give you a little bit of automation to make sure that we take that 5,000 that we don't assign it to a current asset, that we actually move it and we assign it to a current liability so that the credit is due within one year. So that's what the flips are going to do for you. And that's a mapping flip. And that, that is exactly the same as what's going to be applied to groupings as well. So when we're looking at our lead schedules, um, which we're going to come to in a moment. Okay, so hopefully everyone's confident now on what the flips are there and what they're supposed to do. Now, let's move on to the next slide quickly. Here we go. All right, so the next part is groupings and the group file. So before we get to this, let's go back into our caseware file and just do a little bit more exploring through our groupings. Now, what we've got to do to help us today is we have got a, an example file pre-built, Elstrom Limited. Uh, and in Elstrom Limited, we've got our credits and our debtors. So down over here, we've got our credits and debtors notes. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to make, make some changes to the face of the trial balance um, and just understand why balances really are driven into particular notes into particular areas. Um, and one of the areas here that we definitely will be using will be our debtors. Now, if for the eagle eyed ones of you that quickly did quite quick maths and worked out those three accounts, which would be sales tax, purchase tax, sales tax, would be driven here to this forty thousand six eight one. So those ones here will be driven from these three. Okay, so the net effect of those three will be that 40,000. Okay, now when we are looking at settings in this, let's go through and change one of the settings to individual. Uh, and let's let's make, make it go through to the accounts whether the debtors don't agree to what we think they should do. Uh, so let's go through all the creditors. This is, so I'm just gonna go through now to assign mappings. And I'm gonna go through and change the properties here to D11. So there's my back payable. And there's my three accounts. And I'm going to go through and just change the properties on here. Uh, and I'm going to change it to display individual. Okay, so the way these should be working, the way they're designed is if it's display of credit, it should say if the balance assigned to this map number here is credit, keep it there. If the balance assigned to D11 is not a credit, then send it over here. Now, if you've changed this to individual, then what it should be doing and what the, the way it should be working is that it should be looking at as an individual balance, not an individual balance from your account codes, but an individual balance of all the account codes added together, which have been assigned to that map code. Okay. And a good example of that is looking at our bank accounts. So if we go to our bank accounts, bank current account, we've got multiple accounts here, haven't we? And what case where you can do is you can assign multiple accounts to that same one. So here in this one, then I've got two of two bank accounts, one with a negative 200,000 and one with 1.4 million. And what we want that to do really, don't we? We want to net off so you've got a balance of 1.2 million in cash and cash equivalents. So 
If we look at the settings here, right click, properties, you can see it's slightly different. It's not display of debit, it's not display of credit, it's actually an individual. Uh, and if that individual balance is a debit, keep it here at C04. If it's a credit, send it over here to D02010001. Now, at this stage here, the, the notes in the accounts are kind of designed to give you a line for overdraft. Um, so a, an account line for the bank account balance and also an overdraft balance all within cash and cash, cash equivalents. What we all should, also should be seeing is a split between that 1.4 million and the 200,000 going between credits and debtors. So what we're gonna to wanna to do here is from this example, see what it's split between those two notes uh, and actually change the settings to make sure it only drives as into one balance within one line within, say, in this case, the um, uh, cash cash equivalents line. Okay, so that's what we're going to have a look at here, and we'll also play around with the same sort of thing when we look at the VAT account. So let's go and have a go over there. So let's go down to VAT. Now on this side, then at the moment, let's go through and change the settings. I'm just going to change that setting uh, and leave it as individual. I was going to apply here, press OK, and remember, as I said, to get these settings to update retrospectively, you need to unmap first. Once you're on map, save, and then I always close it down to make good habit because uh, I also like clearing this out as well. Um, you don't need to. You could have just, after I pressed the OK there, you could have just then remapped them. But I always like to make sure those groupings are updated as well, and you'll see exactly why as we get to the groupings example. Let me go back to D11. And let's go to the other side next. OK. So we know then the balance is here. Once we say that, that total line here should be 40,000, should it? So let's press apply and see what it says. Okay, can you see here when I press apply, it doesn't say 40,461, does it? It says 141081, which are those two top lines. So 4081 and 137. So what case is doing it with the logic of how that map number is being set up, it's not actually adding all three of these together. What it's doing is just adding those top two together. So let's see what the effect is of that on the face of the accounts. So we go back into the accounts. It's loading at the moment. So you can see at the moment, what we should be hoping to see is that this line updates, there we go. Uh, and from that point here, we can see, okay, we've got the line there of 141,081. Uh, so that's not right, is it? If you go up to your debtors, you've also got other debtors there of 100,000. So that's our purchase tax. now. One of the tricks I'd always say when you're trying to work out where these balances are, and if your lead sheets agree to these balance, is to go to our navigation section of the toolbar, and then from the navigation section of the toolbar, just select this lead schedule button. Now, this button will not work unless you've got this activated. So start, I'm sure all of you already know this, but just in case. There we go. Uh, on engagement setup, I've got reference and structure selected. Now, it doesn't matter what one, but just make sure once you select this, you also press add, okay? That will build those documents into the documents manager. And then that will allow this button back in the accounts to be activated. So as and when I select a balance, there we go. I can select the lead schedule button and it should open up a little dialogue screen. It's probably gonna open it up on my other screen. So let me just drag that across. Always away. Um, and what this was saying here in this case, well, it, my lead sheet is, it does match up, doesn't it? So my other debtors, I've got 100K here. Well, both of these then, we're going to want to modify, aren't we? So we're going to want to update our lead schedule because I don't want 100,000 sitting in my other debtors. I want it to be netted off against the VAT liability and the sales tax. Uh, and that's exactly the same treatment that I want on my accounts. Okay. So let's close this down. And let's start off with, let's look at the um, debtors note and creditors note and get those balances right. So if you see something like this, um, and you're gonna see this kind of treatment very often with, when we're looking at intercompany balances. So when we're putting those group accounts together, where there's lots of uh, debit accounts, credit accounts, we want them to net, net across, uh, off against each other. You're often gonna see these kind of transactions where half the balances are up in debtors and half them down the creditors. So the, the same actions we're going to apply now will apply in this, that situation. So to get this up, what we do is, and what I'd advise everyone to do, is go back to your TV and start looking at these. Now, you just witnessed me obviously add these columns in with that number and our LS uh, flips and so on. These are really useful for multiple reasons. But the first one is we can see exactly why 
the balance is driven into a certain account. So here we've got C0204, okay? And I know that's the, the map flip number. And I know that the properties here say, if this balance is not a credit, then send it over there. So the flip property here is C02, and we've got a debit balance. Now, rather than going through this assign mapping screen and trying to change settings retrospectively, uh, so going in there, removing the accounts and then updating them. Well, what you could just do, because it's a one-off, um, and we know this client has only got a UK VAT scheme, you could just modify the settings from your trial balance. So what you can do to stop this 100,000 going to a debtor's note, it's just stop the option for it to actually send any balances anywhere. So if we only have a map number, then Casework cannot send this 100,000 anywhere else other than D11. So all you need to do in most cases is go to the map number flip column and delete the flip account code that you are, or which has been assigned to that row. Once you do that, you can go back into the account. So what we should be seeing there is straight away that other debtors will drop from the debtors note and it will go straight into my, uh, my creditors amounts for due with the one year, which you can see it there loading. Now, that to me is a much easier way and a much quicker way than going into a sign mapping screen. And also what it means is that you're not changing the mapping database. So these mapping properties are staying consistent at every stage uh, as you use the file. And they're the same from file one to file two to file three and so on. Okay. All right. So at this stage, I was going to stop here quickly to see if there's any questions coming in. Um, change. Anything popped in your body? Uh, no, no, not, not at the moment. No, so you've got excellent. All right. What we're going to do then, hopefully that's all nice and clear then. All right. So what we're going to start looking at now then is start looking at this bank account, which you can see above as well. So we've got this 1.4 million and we've got this 200,000. Now, if we go back into the accounts, what we can see from here is that we've got, there we go, our cash and cash equivalents, and there's our 200,000 there. We've also got our overdrafts here as well, haven't we? So we've got this 200,000 here. Now, this section here, the way I set this up, and the way I want to set this up, I've got this record to the account just for bookkeeping purposes and makes it easier. So on my client system, it's got two account codes for one bank account. Now, I think the easiest way for us to handle this um, and, and would be just to go through and prepare a journal and I'd journal the balance of 200,000 off into this account here. Um, that would be the way I'd instruct new users to Caseware because it's quite easy. You can go straight up to adjusting entries and you can post a journal, which a reclassifying journal, which moves that 200,000 balance, which again, so just to go through and quickly select that. So, uh, J. Excuse the, the lack of detail there. Okay, let's go through. This would be the easiest solve. Um, and it's easiest to explain as well. So if you've got, um, again, juniors or seniors working underneath you and you say, okay, well, maybe this will be better for you as a reviewer because you can put a description in there and it'll be nice and clear why that balance is there and why you've reclassified it. Now, if I close the screen down now and then, and then go back to your TV, well, we can see, oh, first of all, I've done it the wrong way around, haven't I? So that's a bit silly. Um, so go through and change this in a second. Let's change it the other way around. You're probably all watching that going, you're doing it the wrong way around. And apologies. There we go. So now we've got the 1.2 million there. We haven't got anything with the second account. So as and when we get back into the accounts, then case is automatically going to update that then. So we should be seeing this overdraft balance here. And then our overdrafts, okay, it also updated. So that's a nice clean way of doing it, isn't it? Um, the only problem with that is that every single year now, you're gonna have to prepare that same journal. And that's not as efficient as potentially updating some of these settings. So let's go through and delete that journal. Uh, so it's gonna go through and, actually, sure, yeah, let's go through and delete the whole journal. And let's go back to the TV, there we go. So now there's my 200,000 back and 1.4. So what you could be doing here as well is also going through and looking at the flips. I know at this point here that this is just a reconciliation account, okay? Um, so it's just got this negative 200,000 there, but I know moving forward, it's always gonna be netted off. So at this stage here, again, it's the same treatment that we, I just did for earlier for the EVAT. I can select the map number, I can delete it, and then let's go through and have a look at the treatment on the face of the accounts. 
project, so nothing actually changed, did it? And it didn't change because the flip properties, by me editing those flip properties, has exactly the same effect as me posting that journal. So let's go back and let's add that flip back in. So there's the 200,000. So let's go through now and add that back into that rope, that cell below. So just use Control C and Control V, or you can use right click and copy and paste if you want to. And then let's go to the gas now and see the effect. So you can see there straight away we've got 200,000, the cash cash bank update this time 1.7 mil, uh, which isn't right. And we've also got a new bank draft there as well. So there are the two options you've got. You can go through a prepared journal, or you can look at modifying this map number flip property screen. Um, the only thing with it again is that it doesn't have a trail on. So if I remove this here, there's no record of why I've deleted that. Um, what you can do though is you can right click and you can go through and you can create a note on the line. So you can say on here, okay, I put initials in, Tony, I've gone through and I've deleted the flip properties on this to make sure that the balance is net off. So you could use that note function as well. If you do use the note function, uh, you can let's put just initials in here. What you'd also want to do is activate an annotations column. So you go to view, reorder, uh, and on the right side here, what you should see is, I'll probably past it, but no, there we go, annotations. I was going to move that across. I'll move it at the top there, press OK. And then at that point then, OK, we can see on the left-hand side, there's a note. I can hover over it and say, OK, create way. And you can see what I did there. I was typing AL, Cody, but at least you'll be able to see the notes on the line as well. So if you are modifying these map flips, then help us all out. Put a little note on file and let us know what, what you've done and why you've edited them. Um, and then that way, anyone who picks the file up next year uh, has got a good twice the chance of working out what we did. OK, so. That is looking at flips on the mapping. Um, and there's got the other areas like this as well that's also going to affect. Okay, so when we go in here, we can have the prepaid, uh, other areas within creditors, other areas and debtors, but the flip properties may not be set up exactly the way that you need them in that case. Okay, so look at these, look for, from what I showed you. There's lots of articles on the knowledge base as well. Um, what we'll do at the end of this, James and I'll put together a list of uh, articles on the case for knowledge base that will be useful for you to reference back to. Okay. Um, all right, let's go and have a look at groupings and group flips. Now, same thing here, really. Um, groupings there, let's go through. There we go. Help you with the schedules. Um, as you go through, groupings contain group flips. So it's exactly the same there as our group properties. The difference is that the, the property screen. Uh, and where we act, access those from. If I go back into our account and assign mapping screen, and I go down to C04, let's go down to our current accounts. Let's sort of right click here, go to properties. And over here, can you see we've got group one, five, group six to 10. And uh, case where there are 10 groups that we can use, case where of always operates groups one to four, or case where UK always operates groups one to four um, within our accounts templates. Within our audit templates, we also use group six. Um, and group six is what drives the, uh, say the B32 FSA and the rows of the FSA that, uh, that populate within that document. So anyway, when we're here, what we can see is, okay, for bank, we've got I, so that's our I schedule. And then if it's not a bank balance, well, it should be going into our creditor schedule, which is our J2. Now, we've got that example that I wanted to have a look at, which I showed you the, the differences for the purchase tax. Um, so for example, if I went back into the accounts, the, we had 40,600 odd for that liability that's in the creditors. However, my lead schedule split the balances between those two credit balances, that liability, sales tax and purchase tax. So we're gonna be working through that example in a bit as we go through. Now, grouping side then, um, they're, they're assigned to the mapping, so there's not much we need to do with assigning the groupings in the first place. Uh, for us, predominantly, really, it's really useful to understand that they are assigned and how they're assigned and where to look to see what those groupings are. So then that will give you a nice clear trail of where to find those balances on the lead sheets, which is one of the things that I definitely want to go through and show you within this session. Just like the map properties, they can be modified. Um, and in some cases, they're going to need to be. You're going to see there is an example there with VAT liability that I keep going on about. Well, that's going to be quite a common area um, where, where our lead sheets potentially don't match up to what our accounts do because the accounts are set up to look at one thing and our lead sheets are set up to look at another. So we'll sometimes need to modify those group settings to make sure the balances on our creditors 
uh, within the accounts, match up to our J schedule within our documents manager um, to make sure we can get as much value out of case for the system as we can. So grouping group flips, again, here's that screen again showing us the, the groupings. So remembering on the left hand side there is your group and on the right hand side is your group flip. So J2, H2, L1, J1, and so on. Um, these, we're gonna go through and have a little play around with these now, I think. Let's go into the file. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see my screen just open up now. Um, so map inside, I'm gonna leave alone for a bit, and we're now gonna be working on this side. Now, before I actually go through and we look at the, the, the way the values populate within the sheets, for new users who aren't familiar with reference and structures and where schedules, uh, where uh, balances will populate within those lead sheets. Activating these two columns are really, really handy. Um, this is how, if I go uh, work with other casework products which use different groupings, uh, which I'm not so familiar with, then this is what I use to navigate through those, those schedules. Um, from here then you can see quite clearly that we've got our main group structure E, so goodwill, uh, goodwill cost put forward. So, I know that this 94,000 is going to be populated within the E2 schedule. So I can go over to documents and then I can scroll down um, or I can press control F. Uh, control F will search, bring a search field up where you can search it that way, up to you. Uh, and in here then I've got E2. So in my intangible fixed assets, on that point, okay, there's my goodwill cross put forward. And you can see there it says E2.3.1. If I go back to the TV, it says, two three dot one so you can see the link between the groupings and the lead schedule references the groupings populate the lead schedules uh, and so if you're trying to find your way around use these to navigate through the file okay same with stocks same with debtors it all it is all very similar um, also the next step is then when you're using these lead schedules and you you actually navigate through these schedules why is it not populating the way i want it to um, why our balance is not going into the right areas. So this is again where we can use these areas like here. So J2, H2. I know that if we've got a creditor, like a, a credit balance, it should be going to J2. If that there is a oh, that there is a positive 12,000 balance there, then I know it should be going to H2. Okay, so I can use these again to understand where the balance should be going. And if it's not being treated the way I'd like it to be treated, I can modify these settings to drive it to the right area. Okay, so let's go through and use our sales tax purchase tax again um, as an example. So again, just to go back into the accounts quickly here, then what we should be seeing here is we've got 4681. So we want to have a look at the lead schedule. So we know to click on the balance, go to LS, or the lead schedule button up here, opens up on the other screen. There we go. Let's track it back over. And at this point here, we've got social security 141. So I can drill down into this. And if I drill down, it opens another screen on my other screen. And then we can see there we've got those two accounts. Okay. Now at this point here, I'd be going, well, we've got these two accounts here. Let's see how they were mapped. Now a nice easy way to see how they're mapped is just to right click on this row and you've got the option there to go to source. Now what that will do is open you up another window, which will be your work and trial balance. So you don't actually have to go back into working papers to get to your trial balance. Um, it will open up a, a pop-up outside of the accounts uh, or with, from within the accounts documents. See, so there we can see then we've got about liability. Uh, we can see where it's going. Okay, we've modified this one here. We find that's good. Um, that's what updated the, the accounts to have the right balance of 40,461. 40, so this is the issue then over here. It's the same issues we had in the accounts. We've got this flip. And because case we're seeing that as a positive, it's going, well, we're expecting this to be have a credit value and we want to send it here. But we haven't got credit value, we've got a debit value, so we want to send it there. So let's not change anything yet. Let's just go through and have a look at H2. So I'm just going to go back into working papers. Let's go to our documents manager. From our documents manager, if we scroll down to H2, and then our, there's our data summary. And then at that stage, then let's have a look in there. Okay, so there's my other debtors. So 100k. So we know that's the balance, don't we? But if I double click, there's that 2204. At stage, that stage here, we know that we want it to net off against the VAT liability and sales tax. So all we want to do again, a little trick, right click, go to source, takes me straight to that grouping. Can you see that? This highlights go straight to H2.2. 
And at that point, all I need to do is press backspace. Um, so just in case anyone can't see it, it's that balance type, oh, sorry, that grouping right there. I'm just going to use the backspace to clear that down. Because I've used the backspace there, if I go back to that data shift, that data summary down the bottom, you'll see that automatically updates and removes that 100,000 off it. So now the 100,000 is in an H2, has to go somewhere. And the only place it can go now is to the, the other map number. So again, look at this here, sorry, the other grouping. It can only now go to J2. So even though it's a debit balance, it can't go anywhere else because there's no flip no property for it to send it to. So now we go to J2, so documents, and then down to J2, and there we go. What we should see there, now we've got the 4681, or if you wanted to, you could right click now and cross reference that back to the accounts if you really wanted to using your manual, not your manual, your hyperlink reference number here. Hyperlink reference, change it to case view, and then, okay, there's the accounts documents, perfect. And then you can start looking at areas within the accounts and cross references, maybe sections or stuff. Okay. Um, so use those as you go through, then you can make sure it all tallies up nicely. All right, so that is the grouping side. Um, hopefully that makes sense there with the link between the groupings populating the lead sheets and the map numbers populating the accounts. Um, and hopefully there's a few little tips there for you to uh, help speed things up navigating through the casework bar. What I would say is for all of you is to try to use your documents. Definitely try and update your trial balance to make it a little bit more useful for you. Um, add in the map number flip, add in your lead sheet references. Some people also go through and add in a map number description, uh, which you can do by going to view, reorder columns, and then add in a map number description. So we had that one in there. Uh, the reason why is just so it's nice and easy that you can go through and drag that across. There we go. You can go through line and line, just make sure that you've assigned the right map code. And that case just map code agrees to the description on that normal account, okay? Um, so that's quite handy as well when you're setting up files from scratch, just to make sure that you have mapped it. Um, I'm sure you'll, it's a lot easier for you to read this and make sure it's correct than it to, to remember exactly what every single map number is. Okay. All right. So that is all I want to show you on the groupings and mappings. However, I did say I'd go through and show you how to create your own schedules. So let's stick to the, let's stick to VAT on this one. Um, I want to create my own lead schedule, which just looks at these VAT balances. Okay. Uh, so I just want to look at these ones down here. Now, these groupings here don't change it. These are case phase groupings for Mercia. Uh, I wouldn't modify these and change these. Please try not to. Um, what I would say is that we can always create and add in our own groupings. Now, we don't use groupings um, five, seven, eight, nine, or 10. So what I would say is add in maybe a group 10. So I'm going to add in group 10 over here. It's going to drop that. There we go. And let's drop that there. Press OK. So this is called group 10. You can go through and create your own groupings in these. So at this point here, let's go through and create uh, just a V8. I'm going to create bat one, bat two, bat three. Okay. So in here then, what we do is we'll go through say new. So if that was a bit too quick, sorry. Go through here. You've got the down arrow. You can select within the grouping column. On this screen, go through and select new. And we're just going to say this one is the group number, VAT 1.1. .1. Okay. And then that's this say is going to be VAT. And then I'm going to press OK. Now, at this stage here, you can also look at signs and setting up the signs. So we're expecting credits and so on, uh, flip types as well. There's flip types we can assign. Uh, but just very basically, I can just go through and set these ones up at, at one dot and two. And we'll say this is flat uh, from sales. I see your credit balances. Yeah. And then press OK. And then new one here. And I'll say VAT free. Oh, slight space that I should have added in. And just do that debit. Okay, so at this point here, I was going to press OK. And, and then we created those groups. So you can go through and create these together. Okay? They're pr pretty quick and easy to go through and create. Uh, once they're built, they're in there and they will roll forward from one file to the next. 
if you look at the, the way you structured it and you're not happy about it, uh, you want to get it consistent, which I'm sure you probably will do, uh, you can always go back and amend those properties at any stage after, okay? So once you set these up, then what you can do is start assigning them. So you go to the row, you want to say there's my bad liability, and I can then go through and assign that as VAT, I'm just going to say that's VAT1, actually let's use credit, and then at this stage here we're going to set that one up as VAT credit as well, that's our sales tax, and then the final one here we'll set up as VAT1.3, and that will be our uh, post tax. Now, the reason I set it up as VAT1.2 and .3 is so I can group that data. So what we can do in here, and you'll see it when we look at, say, uh, it's a goodwill above, you see for goodwill there is E2.3.1, and that's for cost brought forward. But also for additions, we've got one. So what it will do when the, within the lead sheet, we'll group those two bits of data together, it'll group these two bits of data together, it'll group those two bits of data together, okay? So it's all about grouping, and that's why you create the tiers. Now, when to go through now and create a lead schedule, all you need to do is go to documents, and what I say is a really good start place to start is just to copy one of the documents in case was created. Okay, um, you can create a brand new automatic document, which is what this symbol implies by right clicking and going to new, and you can go to automatic document. However, to make sure we get the setup right in the settings, just copy one of case first to start from. So right click copy. I was going to go to the top of the accounts up here, and I'm just going to paste it at the top. Then there we go, paste that in. I'm going to rename this quickly so properties and uh, we'll just call that VAT and uh, I'm going to call that VAT and then the rest of these settings here these are the standard ones that case where uses for its lead schedule so all we want to do here is change our groupings first of all that's looking at group three which is Mercia we want to change it to group 10 and then the group number we want to start off with well we want to start off with VAT one don't we um, and then underneath this you can look at the structure so you go through you set these up um, you can see that the groupings, there we go, and then press OK. At that stage then, you can double click into the schedule. If it's not populating exactly how you want, then right click, you can go to properties, and on that page, we could use something called wildcards, okay? So that there was looking at anything that was looking for the group number or VAT 1.1, or you saw that I only assigned it to VAT 1.2 and .3. So if I change this one there to a question mark, what that means then is looking at any variations, so group numbers. So you can see now when I change that, we get those two lines. The two lines there for that's 1.2, which are those two credit balances, 140K, and then our VAT debit, which is the second line, okay? Um, so you can see that it doesn't take too long to go through and create your own reach sheets. If anyone wants any more information about that, feel free to get in touch with us. Um, I'll best go through and hand you back over to James now because I know I'm slightly overrunning and he's got a few things that he also wants to talk to you about. So, James, I'll take you back into the slides. Perfect, thank you. Um, yeah, so in regards to the questions that we've got in today, um, we've got a bit of a fun one. Uh, it's just in regards to your trial balance. So I noticed that you've got a different color set up there. It's just wondering how they could change this um, because it's easier to, to see the okay. numbers on there. Yeah, no trouble. Um, let me go back into, it's all done within the settings, but it's all user same by the way, by the way. So everything I showed you about the setup, the, the view, real group columns, um, is a user setting. And the trial balance here, and the, this color setup is set up by me going to tools, options, and then selecting uh, table appearance here, color scheme. Uh, there's a few funky options in there that you can use, rainbow if you want a bit of color, so spectrum. Um, up to you if you'd like to use those, if you want a little bit more variety. Um, but yeah, it's a user setting and you can go through it. The idea really for me is it makes it a little bit easier to read across the line, which is why I use subtle. Thank you. Um, yeah, so if uh, that was the uh, only question today, so if we just carry on with the rest of the slides and just uh, wrap up for today. Um, as always, we do have all of our webinars posted on the caseware.co.uk forward slash events page. And on screen there, you can see the, the next upcoming five webinars. So uh, do be sure to register for those if you're interested. Um, and you can also watch any of the past webinars on the KB as well as the YouTube channel as well. So uh, this recording will be up there uh, as soon as possible after today. Uh, perfect. Wonderful. And just a quick reminder that we do also have a LinkedIn page for the client services side of things. So that's more of the education and media um, yeah, kind of focused posts on there. Uh, and that will be 
post in regards to reminders for upcoming webinars um, and other things like that, as well as our YouTube channel there. Um, and just finally, a quick reminder on the front that uh, if you have any queries or questions, you can use our knowledge base and just use a search function there uh, to, to, to raise your query, as well as using the live chat feature just shown in the bottom right there. You can speak to one of, one of our representatives live on there. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. If we just jump onto the last slide there. Perfect. Just to wrap up for today, thank you for joining us and, and we'll see you again soon. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.